I love technology. <laughs> as long as you don't break it. Oh, I do break it too much. <laughs> Okay, now here we are live. Let me make sure I have it muted on. Yeah, it's muted on my Facebook page. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to go in the comments and tag you just to make sure. And I did tag you in the event. So we'll find out. I don't know. <laughs> Um, okay, we're beginning to get like, uh, perfect. Like, yeah, yeah, awesome. <laughs> okay, Yay, there we are. <laughs> there we are. I, just I just verified on my phone, I saw it. So, I'm like, okay, shutting okay. it off. <laughs> 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 so Garrett, before before we get into it, while people are like getting online, I have a confession for you, which it's a happy one because I mean, when you're around, what other is there? Um, so like I have been, um, I never really pay a lot of attention to soul contracts. Like when I do past life readings for people. It's always about them and their life and their path. And when I meet with clients about past life reading for this life, past lives, whatever. And I'm kind of a loner myself. So I don't really think about me in relationship to other people. I just think about what's my next task to help with planetary healing. So when I met you last summer at the New Hampshire Sound Healing drumming ceremony and Sue Gray Wolf had that like amazing, huge, beautiful painted drum. Mm -hmm. I realized it was like a new thing for me in this life. I mean, not my first time experiencing it, but my first time paying attention to it, that um, you were put in my life as a soul contract for me, but not for you. It was a one-way soul contract. Oh, okay. Yes. So like, there's no reason for you to ever remember me or imprint on me in any way, but my relationship with you it has having a profound impact on my ability to do the work that I'm doing mm -hmm. and become the person I wish to become. And I thought that was really cool to experience it that way. Um, you know, from the, uh, the, oh, wow, I recognize a huge soul contract when it drops in my life and explodes and opens up and like, and realizing there, you know, the only reason we have a connection where you remember me is because I'm kind of tenacious and I keep coming into your life again and again. But there's nothing that I'm giving to your life beyond just what entertains you or what you enjoy having around. So, so I'm, I'm really, I'm enjoying this very much. Thank you. <laughs> Good. It's one sided. <laughs> completely one-sided well that's less work for me bonita so I'm, I'm cool with that okay <laughs> <laughs> one less one less muggle to deal with <laughs> okay that's the first time anyone called me a muggle <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, let me just uh make sure it came at uh is tagged on this uh since you know she's my dearest heart and brought us together um so we we have some people here and uh we're getting a few comments already um oh Veada. hi Veada and kathleen so nice that you all joined us i am here with the Awesome, Garrett <laughs> Duncan. <laughs> this guy is crazy and powerful and like everything you want in a super powerful, knowledgeable person. He's got generosity of spirit, kindness of heart, great sense of humor. You love to empower everyone you meet. Ooh, not bad. Wow. Yes. There's some yes. huge energy coming in, just FYI. Um, 
there's at least one, two, three, three huge, 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 huge. Uh, I want to call them like creator beans because my whole room just lit up. I know you guys can't see out my on your end, but my my light just got really bright, 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 bright. And I'm like, hi guys, whoever you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're seeing your virtual screen kind of go really spazzy, so that's pretty fun. <laughs> well, what, when I start fading in and out, that's how you know Sasquatch comes in too, because my my gets all distorted. <laughs> <laughs> so, Garrett, for um, okay, so for those of you who are watching, uh, who are people that hang out with me. One of the reasons I'm so drawn to Garrett is the featherway shaman work that you do that is so pure and beautiful. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of compatibilities between that and uh, the Prana Shakti work that I do and that we have a great group of people doing. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel really kindred to your work. And when I took that, that intensive class with you, Everything you did, I'm like, oh my God, this is exactly the same as, now I don't know at what point our modalities diverge or at one point one is nestled in the other. I, I have no idea, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But um, the resonance, you know, they're within the same like frequencies of, of intergalactic, interdimensional love of the highest form. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted all of my Prana Shakti friends, especially to meet Garrett especially since you're going to be coming out here to the DC area in mid-May uh, to teach some workshops and to help us with some uh, rather necessary healing in this area. Yeah, it's time to tickle DC with the feathers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And over Memorial Day weekend, you can imagine that, yeah, it'll, it'll need to be tickled really hard. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Definitely working with the feathers, you know, has got me, uh, taking me all across, you know, different areas. We have featherway practitioners um, that are in, I think, the furthest out east. The group that is in Minnesota is the furthest out east. They're located in Mankato, and that's where I did the featherway star intensive. And then we have practitioners. In uh, Arizona, we have featherweight practitioners. I did a featherweight class also in New Mexico. So we have featherweight practitioners in New Mexico. And then at last year's uh, gathering of healers on the Navajo Nation, that we had, I think, eight participants who participated in the first ever featherweight class that was held on my Navajo Nation on the Navajo lands there. So that was pretty significant to me because I was bringing these awarenesses on Navajo land. And so, <clears throat> you know, with the with the spreading of the featherway, it has pretty much um, really connected a lot of individuals because, you know, they, they have an understanding a little bit sometimes, you know, when they get the validation from spirit, when they get the validation in the form of feathers, they collect them, they find them, right? But then they don't know what is the significance behind it. Um, a lot of the times, you know, they they come to me with questions about what, first of all, what kind of feather is this? What type of feather is it, you know? And for me, it kind of comes so second, so natural, second nature, because I grew up with the medicines around feather teachings and feather awarenesses that, oh, that's a hawk feather. Oh, that's an owl. <laughs> Uh, this one's a raven and this one's turkey vulture and I'm like oh that's a pigeon they're everywhere <laughs> <laughs> you know so I just kind of have that natural tendency to identify them but the significant piece about you know with the identification process that it gives an understanding for individuals on how to harness and work with the medicines in the form of bird totems and the meanings behind it. And so when the featherway came about, uh, initially spirit started to bring this into manifestation awareness on how to harness the additional energy behind the feathers and behind the medicines of the birds to bring about their intentions. And you know, so in the feather intention ceremony, that's where you know, we're guided to work with different frequencies and different vibrations. Oh, that's interesting. 
So um, working with the different frequencies and vibrations, are you talking about within the bird realm or yes. all frequencies within yes, the bird just, realm? Just within the bird realm, because again, the Featherway was um, created from the foundational uh, philosophies from the Navajo traditions. So initially growing up, you know, amongst the people, learning the medicine ways, being familiar with the cere ceremonial element, that was like a good background for me. And when the Featherway came into existence, it was really, I took, took the knowledge of the duality, the dual principles, mother, father, male, female, light, dark, protection and warrior versus nurturer. So encompassing all of that into the uh, creating the featherway in a more like a um, dynamic cycle, like a dynamic way to uh, work with work with the techniques. Because mm -hmm. again, that that uh, traditional from that traditional aspect, that was something that was always uh, part of me, like it still is, because we kind of need that, you know, even yeah. though I have all these awarenesses with uh, the galactic and Sasquatch and interdimensional realms. I always come back into my native heritage is because what that does is it anchors me back into the planet, even though I don't like living in muggle world or even though <laughs> Mother Earth, you know, I get mad at her all the time or she gives me a lesson here and there. And I'm just like, ah, oh, why do you have to put up with your kids? Why are you doing this? You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so but from that, you know, from that aspect of me, I think that's where it kind of provided the foundation. It was important mm -hmm. to have that foundation that was established and to creating something in, in this way, you know, so that way, as long as that foundation is strongly anchored, then the energy is held together. So whatever comes in to rattle it up, it always has that anchor. Right. And so from the Navajo tradition, that's where they say that our fireplace, so wherever we have our fireplace, which is like the hearth, home is where the heart is, as long as we have our fireplace, then, then everything is going to be okay. If that fireplace gets rocked, rocked up or if it gets dirty, gets untaken care of, then that energy affects everybody who comes from that space, you know, from, the, from yeah. that earth. And so in that, in that awareness with the foundation of the featherweight, that's what I kept in mind creating this. So I had to make sure, you know, with the first class and how I created everything from from scratch really it was um anchored correctly so because i knew it would expand and i knew it would be brought you know to all these different awarenesses well that makes sense that's um that's powerful so um i have a question about featherway this has been a practice in your family right like you were um, raised with this through your family? Uh, yes, I guess. Yes, in a way, like in the, in, um, it was practice, like the whole smudging with feathers is something mm -hmm. that you see all across all native traditions, right? And so what distinguishes what I created from what I grew up with is that uh, the techniques itself, like the actual cord cutting, like literally mm -hmm. cutting cords, that came into an awareness because it was during my um, growth period when I was coming in understanding that these feathers are like re ethereal representations of swords. And lo and behold, who's the one that prov provided this awareness to me was Archangel Michael. He was the one that shed that and said, who, well, why do you think your native people carry their feathers because they're swords and they use it to cut all that mm -hmm. uh, cording off? And I said, oh, is that what it is? <laughs> you know, right. And so he was the one that kind of really shared that, brought that to my attention. And at the time, I was so ingrained with the native ancestral shaman part of my being that I was like, okay, I'm not supposed to be mixing these modalities and I'm a little <laughs> conflicted here because <laughs> here's this angel coming to me and I can hear him and I can see him and he's mm -hmm. holding his blue sword and I'm holding my blue feather. And he's like, there's no difference. There's no right? difference. Your people just interpret it, see the medicine differently than how it was brought for us, you know, from the, I guess you would mm -hmm. say Judeo slash Christian 
aspect, you know, from that awareness of the church thing. So that's what he was, he was showing me uh, kind of the similarities, but as well as the distinguishing markers. No, that's true. Like it was Archangel Michael that came to Muhammad, you know, and started Islam. It was um, uh, when I go out with the angels and they pull out their swords, they've shown me for ages, they're cord cutting. Um, like they'll go into where uh, up against the demons and when they pull out their swords, they're cutting the cords and helping the demons return to whom they were originally when they were beings of pure love mm -hmm. so that they can go back home and get the healing and the reclamation to their true self. Yes. So it, it, it's beautiful that in every culture, it's the same, just a slightly different perspective yeah. of it. Yeah. And with that awareness, that's where I kind of had to come into um, a differentiation about how there's some of it that's kind of traditional, the dual, dual philosophy, and then how much of it is that versus how much are you bringing that's going to be created from you? And mm -hmm. so uh, Michael had a lot of uh, input with that, as well as um, Metatron. Metatron was the one too that also brought into awareness about the feathers, how each individual strand, when you look at the feathers, when you see them and you see like that fluffiness at the edge here, that each strand is a strand of light. And he said that it depends on what your intention is and that one feather can hold many different intentions because it depends, you know, really what you're asking it to help you with. And mm -hmm. so when I came into that awareness, I'm like, well, this is kind of the part of me that sees the angels, that feels the angels and harmonizing, working with that frequency. But at the same time, my traditional side or my native side is like, okay, um, where, you know, I don't want to be crossing too much uh, boundaries here, or I don't want to be getting in trouble. But my uncle was the one that said, that's, that's your role in this lifetime. He said, mm. when all this happened to me, coming into my spiritual awakening, as they call it, right? He said, your role is to be a bridge, to be yeah. of service as a bridge. And I said, okay. You know, he didn't, and I always laugh about it when I look back and I said, well, you didn't tell me I was going to be a bridge between Sesquitch and the Star Nation and all these <laughs> interdimensional beings that are coming in. <laughs> so I said, he left that part out and he probably did it deliberately. <laughs> well, that is my next question because um, you, you are a featherweight shaman. You channel all kinds of galactic, interdimensional light language, frequency language. Mm -hmm. You are very grounded with Earth, all the Earth magic, the nature magic, you know, Mother Earth, you know, the, and on top of that, you work with Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. So where does, I mean, it makes sense to me because you, have be, you are a divine conduit of interdimensional and planetary. It makes total sense to me that all these frequencies would flow through you. But that's not something like when you're in high school, you're like, when I grow up, I'm going to go to college and become an interdimensional, intergalactic, shamanic, feather, Sasquatch, sound healer, <laughs> light language linguist. So how did all this come together for you? There, there. What, what was the... Can you share with us some of your journey that brought you to all of this? Um, so it started off with, with because as a child, I always knew that um, the force was real. Uh, when So watching Star Wars as a kid, <laughs> I always knew the force was real. I knew Master Yoda had everything down when he would talk about it and he'd talk about and And so that was my, it was almost like that was my galactic self. And it was just saying, this is real. I know this movie is based on, you know, really true galactic histories that happened way, way, way back because I have memories of that, right? Right. And then grandma would be the one like, no, there's no such thing or there's no make-believe. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> grandma, um, that's where I am. No, I'm like, I'm nope, nope, nope. So in a way I had that kind of rebel that was always part of my being. Uh -huh. From the traditional side of things, 
it was always rooted in fear. And every time that I came across a, a, a teaching and it was always in, rooted in fear, like you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that. And right. I would start to question and say, well, grandma, why are we not supposed to? Now you're not supposed to be asked questions. Oh, you just thought, <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's it, we're done. Okay, if you're not gonna tell me why, then there's no, I'm not really going to trust you. You know, I'm not gonna trust mm -hmm. because that, I know there's a deep, better way. I know there's another way because there's no such thing as that fear. And I know that fear is a control and that you're instilling that fear as a form of control as a child. But mm -hmm. when I look at the whole traditional element and perspective itself, it is rooted in that fear. And I see this all across the globe. It's not just right. not sticking on the Navajo tradition, but I see that everywhere. And yeah. I always thought to myself, well, there's got to be another way. There has to be a different way. And I reflect back and I understand, you know, now because, you know, from the past life perspective, I see that at part of me, those aspects of me that been have been in this medicine role and in indigenous multiple times, several times, you know, I've seen the connections in Machu Picchu. I've mm -hmm. always had a fascination with Chaco Canyon and Mesa Verde and the ancestral Pueblos. And then I've always had a fascination with Cahokia and the mound builders in Illinois. So that part of my being always knew that I had lifetimes in those times. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really aware exactly to, you know, what were the specifics, what type of job or what type of life was it? And I kind of always knew that I was in some way the mystic. I was the medicine person. Mm -hmm. I was the shaman in those times, right? And of course, then you then you wake up and you realize, oh, my gosh, you have all these other different aspects, too. It's not just it's just not just your indigenous aspects. You have your druidic, for example, mm -hmm. druidic. I know I had that connection. I had a connection uh, to the Nordic traditions. And I yeah, said, no, you, you have some of them hanging out behind you. Like as you're talking, your past lives are standing behind you and. Definitely like the healers, the global healers are are with you in this life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's all just kind of like, you know, I tried to the best explain it, but it's more like, okay, what flavor am I working with today? Or what flavor at this moment for this person, what flavor is gonna come forward? And so that kind of determines also, you know, now that I have that good foundational establishment mm -hmm. here on earth in this planetary form, in this human form, then now I can travel or I can become aware interdimensionally. So this, when the star nations and Sasquatch came into my life, I always knew Sasquatch was real. I just, I just felt it. I was like, okay, somehow, some way, I can't really explain it. There's an interest, interest there. There's a fascination there. But why, you know, why, why? Now I know why, but I was like, I was always like, why, why am I curious about them? Why do I keep getting drawn to it? Mm -hmm. And so when that awareness came to my attention about um, being selected as an ambassador, that's when the whole <laughs> multi multi-dimensional part of my being, boom, just exploded. And the languages started coming out. And then I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, Stargate here, intermental portal here, oh. Uh, Faye on this side, Elvish on this side. Oh, dragon over there. Okay, I see. All right, which flavor are we going to play with today? You know, and so <laughs> it's just kind of like, you know, because I selected and embody the native costume in this lifetime again, it just helps anchor that and hold me into my being, you know, so that way I'm able to flow in and out. Oh, that's so beautiful. So it sounds like also like your willingness to connect all members of the planet as your tribe gave you a beautiful structure to support your ability to absorb all members of all mm -hmm. tribes. Correct. And so from a higher galactic aspect, so that part of our being, as Sasquatch calls it, there's a word that they taught us, the Unan Ki, which is the which translates to the cosmic self, to the cosmic starlight of who we are. The cosmic starlight is us, is in our being, you know. And mm -hmm. from the Navajo perspective, they've always said that the iron that flows in our blood is from our mother. 
in the iron core from her center of her being, you know, in the planet. And however it is that we ingest, you know, through animals or through plants, we've always had this iron aspect. And so we are direct descendants of the mother, right? Mm -hmm. And then Sasquatch says, well, where do you think that iron core came from? And then I saw this image of like exploding supernova and I'm like, oh, okay, that's what you're talking about. That's what you're referring to, the Unan Ki, the cosmic stardust. So that aspect of our being also is in us. So we have the earth and then we have the star and that we have to keep all of those in alignment. Oh, that's beautiful. Boy, I love how like the most mind boggling sentences trip off your tongue like like yesterday's news. <laughs> and this is all in English too, an understandable <laughs> language. Don't even get started on the star piece yet. <laughs> 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 so we're holding back. <laughs> yeah. Now, I wanted to ask you because um, uh, for people who are watching who are now like, ooh, I need me a piece of Garrett. You teach a lot of... <laughs> That's exactly how I put it too. <laughs> <laughs> And you guys, this is exactly how serious his classes are, too. Yeah. It's like, okay, it's be serious like this for like two seconds. <laughs> don't <laughs> laugh, Garrett. Don't laugh. I know. Don't laugh. <laughs> yeah. At the class I attended, one person was being too serious, and Garrett had us surround that person and tickle their energy with feathers. <laughs> we initiated this person into the Hayoka Society yeah um, because they had that serious demeanor about them and um <clears throat> that's how we, but there was also a teaching behind it too because you know i wanted individuals to really see the feathers as an extension of their being as a wand and so of course our our beautiful intention at that time was merely just to be in alignment with our humor with our inner child allowing ourselves to play but at the same time we were trying to encourage our fellow brother to bring out that inner child as well and you know right. to, get, to laugh to get out of that demeanor of like okay where was this program that said class has to be serious, that class has to be orderly, that there has to be rules instilled, you know? And so in that embodiment, that's where for me, you know, carrying that, what they call the Heyoka energy, that's also too, that emanates out, you know, that, that like you said, a piece of Garrett, but it's that frequency, <laughs> that vibration, that higher, higher resonance, you know, that has to do with laughter, and joy mm -hmm. and continuing to maintain that, you know, and, and so when you instill that for yourself, you know, it's always about you working on you and keeping your vibration as high as you can, automatically it gets it gets projected out in your mm -hmm. auric field. And so that alignment happens and it aligns, you're attracting the right people because they're like, wow, what is going on here? Because what is, what is this person doing? You know, how come I feel so drawn to them? Where's this so, why is it so magnetic, you know? And all it is, is like, you know, I'm just holding a mirror up and I'm just reflecting, you know, the best part of your being that you can be this too, as long as you can, as long as you do the work, you know? And so mm -hmm. that the simplicity, I look at it very simple, but of course the egoic mind kicks in, the seriousness kick in, and it's like, oh my God, it gets frustrating to me. I'm like, ah, it doesn't have to be so difficult. <laughs> so you want the cosmic two by four? I was like, I'm gonna smack you. I'm gonna hit you really hard. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I rather do it with the feather. So it's like, okay, mm -hmm. let's tickle them. Let's tickle them with the feather. <laughs> Well, you know, that makes so much sense. Like we hear all the time, like if you want to complete a karmic lesson, you got to get out of where you're going and on your left path and finish your lesson. And if you choose to stay stuck in a place, things are going to try to push you out, push you back on your path. Mm -hmm. And the more you like don't get the hint, the harder and harder it'll push you until finally it's just like kicking you hardcore and beating you up to get yep. you onto your path yep 
So, but a lot of us, like, we don't notice the early warning cysts, you know, signs. We're like, oh my God, the last 12 things that happened that got worse and worse and worse and worse. I didn't, I wasn't paying attention, but with a feather, like you can get their attention early in before you have the two by four or the, uh, yeah. yeah, or the um, yeah. heavy machinery. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because, you know, the, the, the aspect about the feathers is that you know it's a tool. And like I said before, it's an extension of our being. So if we're emanating higher frequency in the love and laughter aspect and allowing the inner child to be the most uh, utmost form of expression, then the feather is just magnifying that. It's vibrating that already. And then we, you know, we can point it here, point it there. Okay, <laughs> smack this way because you're still not listening and tickle here, lighten up, you know, so all that, that higher vibrancy and the um, teaching stick. Mm -hmm. It's like it sticks. It gets more imprinted into their their mind, into their their mental way of how they how they work with things, how they mm -hmm. how they remember. You know, that's beautiful. Um, now, when you come out here in mid May, uh, Memorial Day weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, when you're here in Virginia. Um, we're teaching two all day workshops on Saturday where the first half is the finding your, your, the shaman within you. Correct. Right? Your, and then the second half is featherway one. Correct. So um, that, that aspect of that class is the recognizing and honoring your inner native. Mm -hmm. And usually what happens in that is it, it's, it's definitely like a past life recall. It's definitely like a past life awareness, but it's more, it brings into awareness because what, what I find is that it correlates exactly to what they're do, dealing with at that moment or like what their understanding is at that particular moment. Maybe it's like someone says, I tell them, oh, you, you know, this lifetime, this tribe, you were a medicine woman. I see real strong. Uh, you're working with herbals, and they're like, "Oh my God, I'm doing that now." I'm like, "I know," because there or it's already ingrained in your memories. So this is just validating for you that you've already had that that aspect, and you're still harnessing those memories in order to achieve what you're wanting in this current time. You know, and so it, it's it's validates. It provides a real strong validation for many individuals, especially in this current time you know where there's this division and the separation that has to do with how we look on the outside you know and so judgment is based upon upon that recognition and really you know in the heart it's kind of like you know I've been there I've done that I've worked with this energy and so when spirit asked me to create this class it was to provide validation to many of those who weren't indigenous in this lifetime you know that they didn't have that aspect of them that was, you know, the, the brown eyes, dark hair, you know, that part of their being, but mm -hmm. in their heart, they've always known there was a resonance and harmony to uh, the movie Dances with Wolves, for example, or else Feathers or Sage, and they're working with this. I'm like, yeah, because you've been there, you've done that, you've, you've done it. And mm -hmm. Spirit wanted me to do this because they said that they needed to hear it from somebody who was carrying the indigenous costume in this life because it was important for them. And, and of course, Garrett said, all right, I'll sign up because I'm, <laughs> I'm, you know, <laughs> I'll get in trouble. So I'll go ahead and do it. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what we have set up, you know, for um, the first part of the day. And then mm -hmm. it segues, of course, it's just gonna build into, right, in, it segues into Featherway One and you receive your first feather, which is what they call the sword feather that's gonna be held in your dominant hand. And you're, you we're working with the techniques as far as cutting cords, the brushing off, and then the divine feminine working with that symbol. Yes. Featherway One is such an amazing class. That, that, that was just the most beautiful way to spend the morning for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then of course too, you know, in that in that class when everybody's all awake, like you know, with your crew, I'm sure everybody's already way up there. So we're oh, really yeah. gonna go even way up there even more. 
you know, because we're like flying with the eagles, but we're like way up there. We're past outside the realms of Earth. Now we're like all high. <laughs> so we'll get high with others. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then Sunday we're doing Featherway too. And oh my God, I'm such, I'm, I'm forgetting what, what is the other class we're going to do on Sunday. Introduction to Star Language. That's it. Right. And I've taken both of these classes with Garrett and they are amazing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And by so the time. I was just going to say with the awareness now that, that, can, um, that the Star Language is going to start coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah since um at the moment i'm living alone in the woods like that sasquatch language is just coming through me all the time i'm like mm -hmm. oh i've been forgetting to use words again yeah yeah and initially too when when i bring awareness around the sasquatch is that um, you know, individuals want to know what their language sounds like. I said, well, it's not as developed as, as ours or as other star nations because the Sasquatch people don't have vocal cords. Mm -hmm. they, they never had vocal cords to begin with. And so therefore they can mimic sounds. They can whistle, they can warble like birds. Or mm -hmm. they can scream really loud, but and, you know, but in that yeah. projection, it's all they're trying to say is like, "Hi, hi, we're here." But to us, we're like, "Ah, you're scaring me." You know? <laughs> and so sometimes you have to be really careful because you know the that energy of of who they are, it could come off very scary to an individual who's not used to that. <laughs> and that's but, where you know, Sesquitch yeah. is trying to all they're trying to do is say hi. We're not, we didn't mean to scare you, but you know what, guys? Our primary form of communication was not speaking anyway. It was always telepathic. So they had that telepathic connection. I was about to say they're highly telepathic, very mm -hmm. telepathic. And when you connect with them that way, you get so much information. Yeah, yeah. And it's really, um, it's really cool. And sometimes it's hard to distinguish because they come from um, such a communal aspect, you know, communal mm -hmm. clan, tribal communion, like it's all there. So you're trying to separate and say, okay, which one's who, which one's name? You're a male, you're a female, you're an adolescent, you know, so mm -hmm. you have to have to play a little bit of mind games there trying to determine uh, just a little bit of distinguishing separation between them as when you're connecting. Hi guys, there's a whole bunch that just showed up right now as we're talking. Oh, awesome. They, they yes. always come in whenever we start chatting about them. Like they know, yes, they like, do. okay, we're on cue. You guys are on call. You're on call. Okay, Garrett's talking about you now. It's time to step <laughs> in. So I could totally see, you know, the the crew, Cosmic TV crew guys, like, okay, Sasquatch, we have you guys on call right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. I've got a crew over here as well. And, um, you know, they're, they're very comfortable living as a collective, you know, where each one has their own individual persona, but they're all together as one. Yeah. So the group of them together is one, but they don't lose their individual personality. Mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the lessons they're trying to teach us on Earth mm -hmm. to help humans become more like that. Yes, and to remember also too about the heart, you know, humans uh, embody more of the heart, harmonic resonance, like the harmonic heart is what I'm hearing right now. Yeah. And this is very important to them because they share that, you know, if there at one point, yes, there was separation, there is still separation, but now as part of the ascension and progressing moving forward as a collective and true oneness and true harmonic resonance, understanding and harmonizing from the collective aspect of we, that's where that determines, you know, it, it distinguishes in that whole facet in the whole realm of, of, of our being of here on earth. Estumo is what they're calling it, estumo. Just that, mm. Mm, that estumo like encompassing is what it translates to a stumo mm -hmm. like encompass all encompassing all together here you know so it's it's like they're trying to say there's no there was no distinguishing no extinguishation there was no separation a stumo mm -hmm. all encompassing i love that 
Mm -hmm. So I, I have one more question. Yes. And then probably a bunch more questions. Yeah. And then All everybody right. else has questions too, I'm sure. Yeah. If you guys have questions, feel welcome to ask. And Lori, I, 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 I will post links to all of Garrett's coming stuff in the comments. And uh, for when he comes out here, we'll make events on Facebook as well as uh, my meetup page. So don't worry, we will not slip him past you unnoticed. Um, but probably yeah. have like another live too, maybe like a month out or something too. Oh yeah, reminders. definitely. And uh, Ariel says, I loved star language class, an absolute must. Yes, that's, <laughs> right? That's Dahlia, Dahlia, who was in the class. Yeah, Ariel, at the Rotomo, she was like, boom, as soon as she got activated and she's like, Karen, I, I'm speaking, but I feel this whole heart and I want to cry. I'm going to go, congratulations on remembering who you are. Now you really know, huh? And, and you know, I could just feel it in her. I'm like, see, see, it's already in us. Estomatara. Yeah, so that star language is um, very um, important right now because it helps with the collective consciousness. So the more that we activate that to our higher essence, to the different, I like to see as flavors, you know, different frequency, different vibration, it, in, it, it elevates it elevates the collective, you know, from our human part of our being. So again, going back to what uh, Sasquatch was saying about the, I forgot the word now, inamu or name, that encompassing. So that facet, that star piece, it's all in our auric. And then it opens up, opens up, opens up, opens up, you know, Sasquatch here, dragon here, Palladian this way, Arcturian here, Syrian on this side, Andorian right this way, Andromedan here, Elementan on this side, you got the phase, you got the L's, the door. So all these different languages, they're already in our auric field. And so when we do the class, all it is is we just flip the switch, turn it back on. Awesome. I was so happy to see how everyone in the class, even the people it's their first time and they were nervous, everyone just, once they let go, they were flowing with language. Oh yeah, I was, uh, you know, Tasha and Percy, they're a native couple and they're like mm. the, one of the rarities, you know, and they're still getting comfortable. They have their traditional side, but then they have the new higher side. And I was so amazed to hear when they finally, like they were speaking, I'm like, yay, you guys come on board. Come on, let's do it. And you know, and so they were pretty um, I think they were really like thrown back, like, oh my God, this is this is such a sacred moment for us. I'm like, I know you guys were ready. If you weren't ready, you wouldn't have signed up for it. Exactly. And for like all of you guys watching who do channeling, it's the same process. It's like the hardest moment is the first time you open your mouth and let a sound come out. After that, it just yeah. flows right exactly. <laughs> yeah but that's so, why we do the exercises to help so that's why it's important with the exercises the vowels the tonality the toning of the vowels because that's how uh star nations had created it because they said the egoic mind sometimes has such a grasp and we're trying to surrender but it's so in that ingrained of how this is going to work why is this working what am i saying so in that questioning process so they said they made us do the exercises to trick it, like to get it out of that mindset. And then all of a sudden, we just surrender out of the tomo, then the language has come out, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a question from uh, Nazi. And this is a great question. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. Um, because certainly you guys have seen me do a lot of wet headed live streams uh, in the past. Nazi is asking, is water a conduit in speaking light language because my mind is always active when I'm taking a shower? He, he, he. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is because, and that's something um, behind the scenes, you know, for me, um, when I do the work, you know, I always like to say that's just the added bonus. You know, I see in human form the added bonus and I see all the beautiful souls that are activating to their true forms and stuff and helping them with their macro healings, you know, and seeing these transformations. But a lot of times behind the scenes, I'm called to go to these places to instill crystals into the molecular structure of the water. So mm -hmm. like certain molecular uh, waters 
carry vibration because what spirit told me is the fastest conduit. And they said, when we activate through tonality, through the sounds of galactic cosmic sounds, or even through toning, you know, that, that is the vibration in our body that is 80% plus water, right? So the internal structure of our, our physicality is all molecular in the form of water. And so we're vibrating and then the fluidity and it just helps in that harmonization and activation because it's like we're coming into our true aspect of who we are. We're truly who we are being, starting to be. And so water, again, is assisting us in that regard. And that's something too that I've been really um, kind of sharing and bringing to awareness for many individuals because when it comes to uh, the healing of the physical body, now with physical ailments and conditions, and like, for example, with this virus now that's apparently creating a scare for many individuals, it's the sound and the water that's going to heal us. It's going to neutralize all of that programs. And so it, it's going to be uh, kind of like a strengthening of our conductivity in the form of vibration. So in that sense, we won't be able to, you know, um, incorporate that into our physicality. It won't manifest so that, you know, the disease and conditions and sickness, all that, it won't manifest itself because we're keeping our vibration at a higher elevation. Sickness, emotions, the sadness, the anger, when you lower and play the game, it brings you down. Mm -hmm. When you were in that element down, then you start attracting those experiences that are not fun. But if you're in the higher resonance and you're tickling yourself with feathers, <laughs> then you're always going to be up here, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so from that aspect of things, you know, speaking of frequency and vibration, so vibrancy, keeping your molecular structure at a higher vibrancy, that's what's going to definitely assist us in the long run. That is great. Oh, and we get some more. Uh, what are some of the things we can use the featherway modality on? Um, well, really, a lot of different things. <laughs> so yeah. the featherway modality, because in uh, featherway one, I show you how to uh, utilize it as a cord cutting tool, as a brushing off. So you're always working on yourself first. And in Featherway One, I always in, in show everybody how to work on ourselves first. That's always the first step. We show how to work on we, on us, on I, right? Mm -hmm. And then we partner up and work on, on someone else. You know, so in that instance, you're always going to have those techniques for you to to clean, cleanse yourself, to clear, to neutralize. So to neutralize all the gunk that doesn't need to be in your field anymore, it gets neutralized out. And then from that aspect, then you can um, start to share with other individuals as far as the intentions. So the intentions, sometimes uh, there are a group of young, younger uh, souls here in the Colorado area that are using the intention piece in their uh, therapy sessions, in their counseling sessions. So what they would do is they would have the individual, their clients, hold the feather. And as they're talking about their traumas, they're talking about all this, you know, releasing, they're seeing the feather hold that for them. And then they would, the therapist would take that feather out on their behalf and release it. Because sometimes from the egoic mindset, we need to see something physically to realize and know, oh, okay, we're putting all this stuff in there. And now I see it letting go so I can really be comfortable with that and in that type of uh, ceremony or ritual if I call that it's like it's coming out of my field so I'm letting it go so I don't need have it in my fields anymore you know and mm -hmm. sure that's just another another way that uh, these feathers because it's all part of the tool you know it's just another toolkit for us to harmonize with absolutely um, and You've used Featherway to heal on all levels of mind, body, spirit, you know, each of the bodies, physical mm -hmm. issues, emotional mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. And often in order to heal one, you need to heal aspects in the other bodies. It's 
pretty rare that someone has an issue that's only physical. Yeah. And to me, I see it if we're all connected and in true oneness. So not only do we have to take responsibility and clean it within ourselves and neutralize it with ourselves. So you work on this and then also everybody else that comes to you work on it there. So that multidimensionality, that facet, because you are going into quantum now, when you think about it, you have the multidimensional, you have parallel realities. You also have your past, present and future lifetimes. All of that is operating simultaneously now at this moment. And so therefore, if you don't clean it up here, then it's going to circle and loop itself back and it's going to come back and start to bother you again, you know, so you really want it to be done. And that's what I've been really trying to get individuals to understand is that if you're done with it, by all means, declare that you're finished. And from that aspect, by taking that empowerment, that new part of your being, now that harmonization has been, you know, it's, it's in your fields, it's re-encoding, it's reprogramming. And then it, it drops into physical, you know, alleviation of the pain, then you don't have that emotional turmoil anymore. So it's all connected, your, your mental body, your emotional, your physical, as well as your astral, all of that is all in, it's all here. It's all here, you know, so that's whole, the whole idea of oneness. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now, uh, let's see. Leah asked, um, do different tones have different healing abilities? Is this why we're so sensitive to abrasive noises? Yes. Um, so one of the uh, awarenesses, too, that I've been talking about a lot is the, uh, the hertz, like the different hertz. So because mm-hmm. if our body is 80% water, then yes, you're going to have a, you're going to vibrate to a certain frequency. And so with, from the water perspective, if we're operating here and you just neutralized gunk out and more, and now you get shot up a couple notches, you have that window right there for the body to reacclimate itself, to be in that new adjustment and the new way of being. And so certain frequencies that are very high, if you're not quite ready to work with those frequencies yet, that's where that kind of um, irritation or else it's actually bringing to surface. You got to ask yourself, you're listening to this frequency, but what's coming up? So the mirror, the doing the mirror work and say, why, why is this triggering me? What most people do, like what 99.99% of, of humans, <laughs> we're like less well, half percent <laughs> bonita. <laughs> Most humans, this is what they do. They react and then they start right. to project. They start to say, you're the blame. So they point the pick the finger back at you. <laughs> you did this to me, Garrett. You did this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, here. I'm holding the mirror. I said, okay, well, that's this goes to say that you weren't quite ready. If you weren't ready, then you should have had asked for it. Plain and simple. You know, so so those frequencies, again, when they trigger and stuff starts to come out, you, everybody has to really stand with this, sit with themselves and sit with those triggers and ask, why am I reacting to this? So why is this such, uh, you know, why is this causing me angst? Why am I getting so emotional about it? Why am I getting like passion about it? You know, because that they have to sit with that because that's where that opportunity for release comes into their their conscious awareness because when you're dealing with frequencies it's always subconscious it's because we're water right so certain vibrations and it causes those memories to release to elevate your vibration right so but now the body is like okay conscious mind i'm having pain or i'm feeling (laughs) emotional i'm freaking out what's going on right (laughs) so that's why i said feather would come in you just tickle yourself and then go back into the high side (laughs) <laughs> just easier to do it that way <laughs> <laughs> all right so garrett we have a question from jacqueline who said um uh when she received a message that she passed forward she felt you know a little weird about that but she did it anyway and it was a good thing to do she didn't let her you know, doubts get to her, but she's wondering uh, if her raspy throat is because she's not using her voice as it is meant to be used. Um, yes, 
And sometimes <laughs> too, with the raspy throat, it could also could be that you're using it in a way that you shouldn't be using it. It, should, it would be more effective to be speaking positive polarity or to sing positively, right? Or tone higher resonance from a positive mindset versus ah, cha, 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 cha. Right? <laughs> so that's where the throat could be, you know, that awareness again, like, okay, what's going on here? I got to sit with this for a minute, even though um, I'm not sure exactly. I just have a raspy voice, you know? And that's where sometimes a lot of individuals, they get too hung up that, okay, that person's going to save me or that person's going to heal me. Uh, nope. <laughs> it's where they're like, I want a piece of gear. I'm like, nope. Where it's going to do this. It's going to hold the gear up and say, nope, what's going on here? I said, I'm going to point back and you say, what's going on here that your body's trying to show you these things, is trying to share with you some type of teaching or some type of lesson? What, is, what do you think that is? I can give you my two cents and little piece here, but really you have to ask yourself that question. It's like, that's why, you know, I try to say, I'm holding the mirror up, but this is what everybody does. No, I don't want you, I want you to work on me. I'm like, uh-uh, that time's over. I said, that time's done. No way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll admit on my side, if a client comes to me too often, and by too often, I mean more than once or twice a year max, I'm asking them, why are you here? You're fully empowered to do this on your own. Mm -hmm. You know, why are you coming to me for information that you know in your heart? You already know this. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but, you know, yeah. at the same time, sometimes people like a little hand holding and gentle guidance yeah. to get to, to help them comfortably. Like they, they're like, okay, I'm here. And the truth I know is here. I just need a little help getting from here to there. And but, that's okay. And that's, that's okay. And it's not, you know, it's not like we're passing judgment. We just got to understand that everybody is at their own evolution, you know, with regards to their growing, with regards to the lessons. And all I'm trying to do is say, you know what, you can make it as harder and as difficult as you really want it to be. And I'll be brutally honest with you and say, da, 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 and cut through the choice. <laughs> All these, you know, the convoluted thoughts and I'll cut through it and bring that to your face. But now it's up to you. What are you going to do with that information? Are you going to continue to be in your victimhood? Are you going to continue to be woe is me? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you do that, then guess what? That lesson's going to come back and it's going to cosmic two by four. Boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so that's where sometimes, you know, you kind of have to um you have to be a little bit more direct with them because yeah. you know they, they they're they're going they're so caught up in that pattern and that program so it needs something to cut you know cut it or else break it shatter it enough mm -hmm. that's why the heyokas have a very important role you know they go in there and they get kicked out of ceremony a lot because you know <laughs> they get Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> But that's also the point of uh, neurolinguistic programming, NLP, that it's to help you get out of a mind's state, a pattern, and into an open path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, yeah, Hayoka's got it. You know, Hayoka's are onto something. Yeah, it's like they just provide that window of opportunity. You know, it's enough of a space for them to say, oh, just what if? So mm -hmm. if that's enough, and then that seed comes in, and then it'll start to blossom as long as they're willing to ask and accept, you know, for themselves, they give permission themselves to receive this. Right. Now, uh, Garrett, like, you are an amazing teacher. I like amazing like i'm happy to you know worship at the garrett school <laughs> of stuff to learn but, but you you're also a healer um yeah i work what, with entities yes yeah how how what what kind of what do people expect from a session with you or what are what do people come to you for for uh private sessions so a lot of the times the kemeturu it starts off with guidance that i get a tomo 
So it's bringing that awareness um, through guidance, a question, like validations, the answers that they already know, and then we go deeper, like, in, like you were saying, the NLP, um, and then we go into more of that vibration or patterning that's causing this disruption. It's more because it's always surface. Oh, I'm, I need help with this. This is hurting. But no, what's the deeper core? What is happening in that space? Oh, it always has to do with inner child. A lot of the times, it's always inner child work. The trauma, an acknowledgement, unspoken truth with inner child. So it's like, so in that sense, it's like I'm holding that space for them to be like, come on, it's time to acknowledge and say, okay, give that child a voice, grab the child's hand, pull him out, pull her out. And then a lot of times too, you know, karmically, when they're ready with the lesson, if they're done with the lesson, I will look at them and say, are you finished? And then when they, depending on how they answer, well, I'm not sure, Gary. I'm kind of like, I'm like, okay, we're done. I said, that was your one chance. We would have <laughs> took you out of the karmic game, but that lesson's coming to come back. You know? And oh. then it's like knocking one more chance. I'm like, why is it already answered? I was like, no. <laughs> uh, oh my God, that is so hardcore. <laughs> no more messing around. I ain't messing around anymore. I say, it's, you're in it or you're still gonna play. It's either one or the other. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that awareness you know it's just it's it's a method i said because it's direct it's intense boom 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 sumo. so when i'm working on someone's energy field again like i was saying before we're quantum so we have all these different facets of our being that are operating all in this time and a lot of times too you have intergenerational trauma for your mother and father's lineages your ancestral lines all of that is in your field mm -hmm. so so that's where the activations come in. So these activations that were gifted to us by Shirley Bullstock as well as the Star Nations, a numerical code. So we bring those sequences back into purity. We bring it, we re-encode it to neutralize out all the trauma and gunk, you know. And mm -hmm. so when 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 individuals are answering correctly, what they'll do is like they'll lean forward and say, yes. I'm done with the lesson. I might like, thank you so much for answering that way because you took charge. That says to me, you're taking responsibility, not just for you, not just because Garrett's here. No, 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 no. This is for you. And so because of that, boom, they changed their whole future. So we neutralized the codes. All we do is read it, blah, 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 blah. And then they're like, oh my God, I feel so much better. And then boom, miraculous transformation takes place. And so wow. that's where, yeah. Uh, I saw uh, one um, gentleman and he had, he, he was done, like he was telling me, uh, I forgot, I don't remember exactly what it was about, but when I asked him that question, because Spirit said, because they don't give this to anybody, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, they have to have gone through enough of the karmic debt or karmic lesson behind it to get to that point. And, and it was like their one or own true shot. And if they answer it right, they could, you know, be done and heal miraculously. So I saw this gentleman and he, he was like, yes, Garrett, I am finished. I'm like, all right, let's do it. So we're in that <laughs> you know, empowerment. And I ran those activation. Boop, 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 do it. Mm -hmm. And then his whole future line, all his descendants, all his male descendants in his future, great, greats, mm -hmm. great, great grandson, boom. It just whole timeline shift and I'm like oh my god dude you would not realize what you just did I'm going to share with you as much as I can see but I go whatever sickness was plaguing your male and all your future heirs I go we just neutralized that out and now they're living beautiful lives because of what you just did I go this is a freaking big deal you don't realize how big this is but I'm glad you did it because all your generations are completely clean you know, mm -hmm. so it was pretty amazing. And you just see his face. So a lot of times, you know, when I'm doing the activations, I, I like to call it the Navajo facelift because everything yeah. oh, gets all nice and smooth. And then mm -hmm. it's like, oh, my God, you know, we use non-energetic procedures, non-invasive. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. So it's kind of I'm working in the quantum field. So my hands. They just go where they need to go. And then you have the star essence, the star language piece. 
Ara ke kenyera su 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 a ke shti ara ti shinga na ara te te mand ur te sing align align the ara te 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 kamat shere. When I snap the fingers, that's breaking the gunk. No more attachments. Dun 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 dun. Yeah. So okay. Oh, hold fast. Do, 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 do. All right. Hold on, Garrett. This is a question for everyone watching. Did you just feel all that through the screen? Like that was potent. Your little. You're doing a little example. I was like, wow. And I know everyone watching was having the same experience. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> so, you know, the backgrounds that we have going on, that's mm -hmm. us, that's in our auric field. So all those little dots are like all these quantum memories that we had as these different star nations, earthly lifetimes, future lifetimes, mm -hmm. genetically from our ancestral lines. So we have all those. So what happens is the hands will go into the tweak here, remove that out, no more programming, align, line, line, bring in the frequency, bring in the heart resonance, work in the heart space. So it's like almost like, yeah, like you get this, um, how do I explain it? Like a, a tweak, tweaking mm -hmm. here, turn, turn, activate, let's turn it back on, boom, 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 boom. And then of course, as I'm doing this, and I'm speaking the language too. Sometimes I get to move on. Yar di shunduro, ar di chishuru, or di shinga nara tato mukondara, ar di kishu tato kumondara kiti mukondora, and then remove that all old program done, neutralize, done. I get to move. Yeah, awesome. Work really fast. I work really fast, so that's why sometimes when I'm in that space, I'm just like total airhead. I'm like. <laughs> so cool so listen you guys we are with that has been a very quick hour we've got yeah, right? <laughs> yeah we have one final question okay to, before we say farewell which is for our wonderful friends who are watching this uh today if they feel there's something within them that they're ready to release that they feel this is interrupting me from my path forward and yes. they want to know where in their life it comes from or where the core or the beginning of it is mm -hmm. how can they determine that on their own through muscle testing or um you know they sometimes to me just with my experience Sometimes, as long as they get to the point where they realize that there's something off or mm -hmm. there needs to be a new program instilled and old one taken out, to me, sometimes it doesn't matter. It right. doesn't matter. You just keep it general. So that's what I like about the activations when I provide the numerical sequences, is I just keep it general and I just cater, you know, uh, traumas. Uh, scars, pains, aches, emotional body, and I run through the body, and then I read the codes, da, 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 and then phew, bring them back to neutrality, return to purity, and then it's up to them from that point moving forward. Now you want to fill yourself back up with the, you know, whatever vibrancy positive, you know, that part of you, because you don't have this hindrance now that's plaguing you. And so right. in that in that instance, sometimes it's not as beneficial, but, but every of course everybody's different. So, but it's not as beneficial to kind of get an idea of where exactly this is coming from. Um, and that's just the nature of like from now we're moving into multidimensionality and to the quantum part of our being. So operating from that, from that aspect, just go to it. Wherever it goes, we just set that intention for the neutralization to go where it is, clean it up there, and then reel, it, reel, in, reel in the effects now. <laughs> the nice there smoke you go. goes back, <laughs> right? Yeah, but yeah. you can always set that intention. One of the, again, just reiterating what I said uh, before is that reminding everybody, say, okay, guys, if you're done with the lesson in your empowerment, so this is where you're working with your warrior energy. You're in that empowerment. So you're standing really firm and you're like in your strength. You declare first to yourself, I am done. No more lessons. Whatever lessons are playing out as a result of my experience, I am done. And then just neutralize it out. Return to purity. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> return to purity. 
return to purity. So you just say that a couple times, return to purity. Return to purity. Yeah. And your body automatically aligns. Oh, okay. This is what I was. And this is how I am before all that junk. Yeah, silly human. <laughs> so in a way, in a way to take it from the sublime to the mundane, if you're walking and your foot is hurting because you have a rock in your shoe, you don't need to worry about where it was the rock came into your shoe or where the rock came from. You just take it out of your shoe so you can walk. Correct. You take it out of your shoe. Yes, and exact, but if it's still bothering you, if that nag is still there and that pain, that's when you want to be like, okay, return to purity, whatever right. I may have picked up, energetic debris from that rock, wherever that rock came from, maybe that rock was painful. But at the same time, there's a lesson behind it too. So they'll say, what is this rock showing me? So right. you kind of have to be open enough to understand, oh, maybe it's telling me to slow down. Or maybe, because mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot of times, like for me personally speaking, when I hurt myself, that's mm -hmm. my body's way of saying, Garrett, you're still in 3D. You still got a 3D <laughs> body. I'm like, well, that hurts. So like, I know we have to shut your, you know, you're so up there. We ha had to close it off somehow. So yeah, that's why you banged your shin, you know, on this thing. And I'm like, oh, well, it's still painful. Welcome back <laughs> to earth. This is your earth body. <laughs> so from that perspective, you know, it's actually being of service. It's doing a service for you. Right. Uh, well, thank you so much, Garrett. Um, and you guys, I'll put links for all of Garrett's, um, uh, your Facebook page, website. Mm -hmm. Garrett will be here in DC, Memorial Day weekend. We're going to have some fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll do another live stream or so before then. Also, you guys, Garrett does live streams on his Facebook page that are fantastic. So he's a, a good guy to like and follow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to remind all of you how to laugh, silly humans. <laughs> just get a feather. Tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. And thank you, Garrett, for joining us. Uh, and I send love to everyone. <sighs> Have a wonderful day going forward, right? Yes. And <laughs> netumo. Yes, in all encompassing. And netumo otama. Yeki stunda resinga manduya. Eki han. Wunundu resisiri. Ariakenduru mundure si shande eki anandere sun. Yeki amun. Ariakesto soya candiretiri. Yandere sasun durakam derekitiri, Yananda rasishuru, Akaya shishon de resishinga, Atara mesendara, Yenukundu resiri, and in Akans de resishun, also beautiful loving mass as Sasquatch, Akastura goodbye, Kinitiri, No, 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 Ooh, <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you. Ooh, <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you all.